Hello there, and welcome to episode 2 of my combat tutorial series for Jack the Lions 3. Today, we're going to resolve that little combat on sector I2, and I'm going to talk about handguns a little bit more, because, you know, in the last episode, I was too busy explaining the basics, so I want to go a little bit deeper into that topic. And sniper guns, because everybody loves sniper guns, so... I modded up this rifle here, Kalina has joined our squad, and you can modify each gun, and I just installed a improvised suppressor. 20 parts, and turns your gun silent. That's your basic sniper gear. So, here on this uh, map, we're first going silent, that's always very important, and we have on this map the first time two groups of enemies that we can separate and take each on their own. So, if we'd be taking the combat from this angle, we'd be going directly into a very bad situation. The enemy could shoot from above here, and everybody down here would have free access to us, so this path is for me a no-no. Instead, we're going to go even deeper, and once you spot more enemies, I highly recommend you to reduce your total amount of scouts. So we're going to hide behind that corner, press F5, quick save, as you never know. And let's send Fox up ahead and see what we got there. So the enemies are patrolling here, and uh, they're starting to some sort of dialogue. One thing I directly want to say about dialogue situations is they are always a timed uh, event. So once that dialogue is over, they might change their behavior. So the other party that we got is scouts over here. So our combat will have these guys involved, these guys involved. So we're going to take the combat from this direction here. We're trying to take out these two guys as quick as possible and force the rest of the enemy towards us. After that, we're going to take the enemy outpost behind there, but uh, one thing after another. So, to get that all go uh, done quite good, we want to get as close as possible. So, I'm going to leave Kalina behind for now, because I don't want to go for sniper action too much here right now. Because currently, this fight I want to resolve with handguns as good as possible. So, this corner here is a pretty good one. As you see here, it's blocking the line of sight for all the enemies there. Let's press O for this uh, camera sight, or O for the overview sight. I personally love that one. And as you see here, I'm bringing my people here now into position as close as possible. Let's see. I want to try if I can get somebody back there as well. And that's a good beginning. So pressing F5 for another quick save. And now we can start attacking. So Raider has a really good situation here. So we're going to take the initiative and try what we can do. Obviously we didn't hit. It's raining. That does increase the costs for aiming. And uh, weapons get damaged faster. So Long range combat is not ideal here. Here we got off something very fun. As you see here, the enemy was trying to get himself into position. And since they don't know where your people are at, he managed to walk himself right into Norma's face. So, when you're up close like that, the problem here is this guy is wearing armor. So, I'm going to show you here. It's reducing the damage a little bit. But still here, in that situation, we're just going to take the two shots and that's that. So... Let's take the rest of these guys. Here we could now go closer. But first I want to move my squad from back to front. So we're starting out with Kalina. And I'm moving her inside the blue areas here. So we're going to pick up Barry now. 
So the blue squares depict where your mercenary will be still able to shoot if you move them over there. So since I'm okay with Barry not shooting this turn, I'm going to move him over here. Raider, he has spent his action points by activating the combat, so I'm going to take cover with him. Take cover is an interesting action, as you can take just all your remaining action points. You'll spend four of them to be better protected, and everything beyond four, up to a maximum of five, I think, will be transferred into the next turn. So here we will gain one more action point for Raider, and that's just what I'm going to do. And Kalina, we're going to move her up front here. And Fox has a really, really good position here. So instead of risking her, as you see here, our squad is really clustered well together. I could now go up front here and uh, go in guns blazing, but that wouldn't be a smart thing. Instead, we're going to go Overwatch. I'm also not going to utilize the maximum range of Overwatch. I'm rather going to go for something like that. That's simply because... Fox is wielding a Peacemaker Revolver. These thingies don't have extremely high range in terms of accuracy. So either they get into a good shooting range or they don't. And as you see here, our enemies are moving closer, but not so eager. Trying to shoot at Meltdown, but uh, nothing really happened. Very good. So let's quick save here. And let's take care of this little bugger here. So here, we're, this is a perfect opportunity to take a, uh, to take good uh, to make good use of mobile shot. So we're going to move on over here. This is a close distance, and most likely, just like I thought, we're going to hit that guy. Also, this guy happened to be the last person to hit meltdown, and that's just how she works. The last enemy trying to attack her, if you Hit that guy who's been marked by vengeance, you gain four action points. And that's just what we did. That's why she's really good with uh, stuff like uh, run and gun and so. So, we're going to take this guy almost down, and then we're going to go back into cover here. I didn't aim here exactly to take that step back into uh, cover again, because I figured that would be really important. So, let's move on Raider over here. It's a really, really bad opportunity. So instead, we're going to put Raider here over into Overwatch. If you can't take a... If you can't land a shot well, it really pays off most of the time to just put your uh, folks into Overwatch. So, we're going to set Fox on over here. She has a lot of cover into these directions. She still has six action points. This looks like a really good opportunity. Let's try and take that shot, but we didn't. Too bad. There was a realistic opportunity in hitting that, but, uh, well, didn't come together. Too bad. So, we are going to move Barry carefully up front, and uh, you might notice I'm always trying to take one cover after another, and let's see how that comes together. Enemy didn't walk into our Overwatch cone, but that's okay. I don't mind. All right. As you see here, I give the opportunity, I give the enemy a lot of opportunity to attack me, but at the same time, they don't hit us too much. So let's see if we can take a cheap shot here. No, we don't. So let's aim that properly. So it finally dies. I tried to take a cheap shot, but uh, wasn't possible. Let's put it back into crouching position. And now we have these two guys up front here. That's uh, that's okay. We're going to put Fox into this position. Well, it's not too good. Let's try this one instead. There we go. And into Overwatch. Trying to force my enemies into some uh, bad situation while moving turn by turn closer closer as you see here so let's put that over here i i might uh, also want to mention that this is also a really good opportunity for one uh grenade from barry and uh let's see kalina by the way 
is a high range fighter. As you see here, from all the way back there, she's able to fire at that guy. Let's try if we can take a shot here. Boom. Sniper rifle power. And that's the difference between handguns and sniper rifles, but each of them has their distinct qualities. We were able to get close to these guys really, really safely. And the big advantage of handguns in general lies in the fact that they're extremely efficient in terms of action points. Sadly, Barry got wounded here. He actually suffered a wound. So I'm, I'm mad at these folks now. So here we have the opportunity to either hit groin uh, or torso, uh, to uh, groin, arms or legs. We're going to try and take the groin shot, even if it has armor. There we go. So we resolved that one. Next step, we got to bandage up Barry. Being wounded makes you... Um, here. It reduces your maximum HP. That's pretty much all. And you have to spend some time after this mission to be fixed up again. That's the most uh, annoying part. So, bandaging him up. Basically, whenever a mercenary got wounded in combat, you get to bandage them up. So, let's move our people up to the next combat spot. I'm gonna loot the stuff beyond, uh, after this uh, episode. So, we have now some baddies on over here. And I want to demonstrate here in the second half of the video the power of stealth combat out of combat. I mean, you saw what Kalina was uh, able to pull off there. Let's show you what you can do with all that out of combat. So here the enemy is sneaking around. We have a lot of good cover positions there, so I'm bringing up my folks here into a position where we can fight well. And uh, so let's wait until everybody's in position. We're going to move Kalina up here. So high ground is amazing. And while Kalina is moving up here, you can also do stuff like this and put your entire squad prone. If the enemy is very attentive, sometimes they can spot you. While being prone, though, they d your mercenaries can no longer shoot over these obstacles. It's pretty simple because they cannot look over it. But at the same time, the enemy is hardly going to spot you in these positions. So that's something you can use for your own advantage. So we are going to use the crouching position here. And let's do this. There we go. And what happened now is really wicked. Nobody saw that this guy was downed, and therefore nobody from the enemy side in the camp did start turn-based combat. So now we can just sneak up ahead and repeat that. You can do that with all different uh, types of uh, guns, but sniper rifles are well, let's say notorious for this uh, type of gameplay. So meanwhile, let's just sneak up to the enemy. By the way, this uh, exclamation mark here stands for the fact that this guy here has seen his uh, friend dead on the ground. So Sniper found a dead body. So that's also some reason for the enemy to go into turn-based combat. But as you see here, my entire squad is hidden. And oh uh, yeah, that, that's fun. So, to sum one last thing here up. Oh, he, I, I, I unhid him. Oopsie. So, that didn't hit. So, Raider is hidden. When you're hidden, you see there, there is a uh, capability of a stealth kill. That is your chance of instantly killing the enemy. I don't know how many person these uh, actually are, but uh, every attack out of stealth has a certain chance of one-shotting your enemy. And that's, uh, well, pretty much all I want to say about uh, the basics of uh, sniper um, 
sniper stealthing, yeah, that's how we want to call it. And you should have now a pretty nice impression about uh, handguns. Just want to talk about hand one thing in particular. Handguns, they have not too much of a high range, but a really high damage per shot comparatively. The quality of a handgun, I personally make it uh, define it by the total amount of possible modifications that you can put onto the handgun. The high power has three slots, the Peacemaker only has one slot. That changes the total amount of uh, things you can do there. And in general, if you want to play this type of uh, combat playstyle a lot, you should also consider dual wielding. This way you can shoot both guns in one turn with a discount on the action points and you double the damage if you hit both bullets that is alrighty so that's pretty much it next episode we're going to move on into Erni village where we're going to talk about how to take a fight like this and put it to your personal advantage how to go through well hostile territory where the enemy is potentially outnumbering you and you need to sneak up and uh, get the job done strategically. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Drop me your comments down below. Like I said in the first episode, let me know what kind of combats you want to have a tutorial about and I'll see what I can do. A thumbs up or a subscription would be wildly appreciated. And while you're at it, there's also the playlist link down there for the entire playlist for this combat tutorial series. That being said, I hope you're having a great day and see you next time.